You know, uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, I, I can tell you if there's ever been a time for you to go make your money to the point where you can't be controlled, if there's ever been a time where you got to make your money to make sure others cannot push you around and bully you around, right now is the time. For me, if, if you think about a lot of times when a family is raised and, and they have a couple of kids who don't have a lot of money and one of them decides to come out of it and you ask the question from them and you say, you know, why'd you want to be a millionaire? Why'd you want to become rich? And he says, let me tell you, I was poor in my family. I told my mother, my dad, I will never be poor. There's a, a part where Dave Chappelle in his recent uh, hour comedy skit that he did, and he tells the story about him growing up with his dad and they would never turn on the heater because they couldn't afford to turn on the heater. And he told his dad one day, I'm going to be a millionaire because I hate being poor. I hate being poor, dad. He says, I just wanted to be, make money to not be bullied and controlled. And I think that applies uh, uh, to today. It, it all, we almost need times like this for us to realize what we really have. What do I mean by this? You talk to any kid who's lost their dad or mom, and you sit there and you complain about your dad and mom to them, they are slowly, the more, the more you complain about your parents and they lost one of their parents, the longer you complain, the more annoyed they get with you. And, and if you continue, they may even snap and say, listen, stop talking bad about your mom. And I wish my mom was right here right now with me. At least you got a mom to talk to. Stop talking about your dad this way. At least your dad's in your life. I wish I had my dad in my life right now. My dad died seven years ago. Like, that's the stuff that we're learning today. You know, when a lot of people are saying, well, you know, uh, what about this? And what about that? And what about America this? And what about business this? And what about business? And what about capitalism? At least you're living in a place where we could go and make the kind of money that we want to make. For me, I was born and raised in a family where my dad worked at a 99 cent store in Inglewood. If you've been to Inglewood, it's not the safest area. And he worked right by Great Western Forum. One night he comes home and uh, he's not talking. I said, why are you not talking? He said, I mean, it's just, you know, he's quiet. I said, dad, what happened today? He says, well, it is. It's just one of those days. I said, my dad's not a guy that's very expressed. You know, uh, here's how I'm feeling. Let me talk about it. I said, dad, what happened today? You're acting weird. He says, well, you know, some man came and he pulled a gun on me. I said, who pulled a gun on you? He says, some man came and he says, give me all the money. And he pulled the gun on me. I said, what'd you do? He says, I didn't give him the money. I said, why don't you give him the money? What are you talking about? Said, why don't you give him the money? He says, I know this man. He always comes to my store. I told him, Billy, why are you coming to my store to take my money? I know you. And he says, I sat the man down and I told him, put the gun away. I closed the door and I had a conversation with him. I said, I'm not going to give you the money. You got to work for this money. And I'm like, this guy, you know, you, the rule number one, if you're getting robbed and you're at a 99 cent store in Inglewood, what do you do? Here's my $1,100. Take it. He says, no, I didn't give it to him. He says, I talked him about life. I talked him about what he had. He told me he has a couple kids. He told me he has things he's living for. I said, you don't need to rob somebody like me. He says, I give him 20 bucks. And I said, go away and don't do this again. He, I, didn't report, I said, did you report to the cops? He says, no. And that night I'm like, listen, I understand we got lucky today, but on the long haul, he ain't going to get lucky if he keeps working over here. And my dad, so I went, he went to a hospital. My dad had a heart attack and I was at the hospital in the parking lot by myself. And I said, yeah, this is never going to happen again. And this is never going to happen again. If I had a hundred thousand dollars in the bank right now, this won't happen right now. At that time I was in that $49,000 and my account was negative 730 and I'm sitting in my Ford Focus. I said, this is never going to happen again. I went to work, Jake, in a way I never have before, just because I wanted choices and options. So for somebody that's watching right now, there are those who are not affected because they have money. They're going to be fine. If this thing goes for another three months, six months, 12 months of lockdown, they're not affected by it because they're sitting on 50 million, 100 million, 10 million, 5 million. They can, of course, no one likes it, but they can tolerate it. Then there's those who are poor who are doing better today than they did pre-pandemic. What do I mean by this? A guy comes to cut my hair. He brings his stepson with, me, with him. And I asked the stepson, how you doing? He's 18 years old. He said, I'm doing great. This was last week. I said, why are you doing great? He says, I made more money this week than I made the last two months because of the pandemic. I said, what are you talking about? He says, my stimulus check. I said, you made more money. I said, how much money you made? He tells me to check. I said, you made more money than you made the last two months. He says, yes. He says, I hope this thing goes for a few months. So the rich is not worried about it. The poor is not worried about it. Not they're not worried about it. They're making more money that's coming into them because of unemployment. 
middle America, people making 50,000 to a couple hundred thousand dollars your income, they're being impacted by this tremendously. That's the issue that we have. These guys here are going to be inspired to make sure that once this thing is done with, they never ever put themselves in a situation where they're going to be this worried about it. Meaning, if you're thinking about buy that watch, don't buy it. Keep the cash. If you're thinking about going to Starbucks two times a day, maybe go once a week. If you were thinking about buying that car with the payments going to be 900 bucks a month, maybe go to the $300 a month. If you were thinking about buying that truck that's 30 miles per gallon, maybe buy the other car that gives you 38 miles per gallon. If you were thinking about buying that Ferragamo belt that's 350, maybe buy a regular belt for 29 bucks. If you were thinking about buying that $500 Ferragamo shoe, maybe buy the Kohan shoes for 99 bucks. If you were thinking about buying $400 or $600, you know, Jordans or whatever, maybe go buy the $68 shoes. Everything goes back to principle based. I was in the Caribbean island and I, uh, my driver is driving me. He says, I'm the mayor of the town. And he was the mayor and the driver. I said, you're the mayor and the, he says, yeah, I'm the mayor. Shows me the paper. I'm like, the mayor's the driver. This is crazy. I said, how big is the city? And he says, uh, over here, it's about 10,000 people. I said, you're the mayor? I said, yeah, I'm the mayor. I said, so tell me, how, do, how does banking work and how do homes work? He says, oh, here you have to buy your house cash. I said, what do you mean? You can't finance? He says, no, you only buy cash. I said, what do you mean you only buy cash? That's my house. I bought it for $50,000. My mom and dad and my wife's mom and dad, they gave us some money. They helped us. We worked hard and we saved money and we bought that cash. So you don't have any payments on it. No, we don't have any payments on it. Zero payments on it. Zero. We own it. It's cash. Interesting. We kind of need to go back to buying stuff cash and 100% and stop financing everything like we did before. And that'll allow us to be more disciplined financially. And those who want to get out of the situation they're in right now who are losing their jobs, it's a reflection of many of our habits. And just like I had bad habits before, it's a very good time to change our habits. And once we do good times, we'll be around the corner.